All right, we got to try to figure out how to get some kind of good news out of this lunar eclipse blood moon that's coming this week. What have you got for us? Um, I don't really have any good news about that. This moon scares ah! I know, this moon, this full moon, ordinarily full moons are not bad. They bring matters to a climax. They, right. they conclude right, right. things, which is can be good or bad depending on how you do. But this one in particular is the first of a, it's called a tetrad of lunar eclipses that are blood eclipses are really what it is. It's the Aries... Um, on the Aries and Libra axis, and part of the problem um, is that Mars is closer to the Earth because it's retrograde than it has been during other full moons. Mm -hmm. um, this is a total full moon, like I said, the first of four, and I think the worst part about it is you can see it all over the West Coast. You can see it in the United States, and wherever the shadow falls, whenever, whoever is in the path of totality, it kind of magnetizes the Earth and causes it to kind of quake and tremble, so... I'm glad I live in Florida, not the West Coast. You can already see that stuff rumbling. The coast of Chile has had, you know, earthquakes. Mm -hmm. California has. So I'm really kind of happy I'm here. But for the rest of us, um, it just is a full moon that brings matters to a climax. So since it's in the sign of Aries for this, it makes Aries look at their partnerships and causes them to call their partnerships into question to make sure that the Aries wants and needs are being met inside of the partnership. For Tauruses, this is a full moon that makes him take a step back and reevaluate where they've been over the last year or so and where it is they want to go to and how it is they want to get there and who it is they want to get there with. Um, and for, for Tauruses, actually, it's more about humble service, which is what they've kind of been doing, and they're just about over that. They'd like to get some recognition for the job that they do. For Geminis, this particular full moon is in their 5th house of love affairs, children, amusements, sports, and pleasures, and their 11th house of hopes, wishes, goals, and objectives. And I always read that as a toss-up between old loves and new loves. Not just necessarily romantic loves, but what is it that you love? Um, and I would pick, in this case, old love over new love. For Cancers, 10th house of career and public standing, the spotlight is going to be on them and the job that it is that they do. And they're going to have to choose between work and home. And i got to tell you, this time... Or now I'm a big fan of choosing home, but this time cancer really needs to choose work. Um, for Leos, legal matters, education matters, important matters at a distance go very, very well for the Leo. And they're, they're going to get the opportunity to sign some sort of contracts or put something into motion. And they need to be sure um, that the law's on their side when they do it and that they get what they want out of it, which they're likely to get because the law's on their side. For Virgos, it's about other people's money and other people's resources flowing their way. It's their ability to earn an income and also their ability to pot, to partner up with somebody um, and to maximize an existing resource rather than looking for some new one. And it's really all about the money. For Libras, um, it's about their partners. It's about their intimate one-to-one -one, notice how Andrew looks away. Their intimate one-to-one <laughs> -one relationships is what they're really going to be examining over the next couple of months or so to find out whether or not it is meeting the Libras want and need. Um, for Scorpios, six hours of work and responsibility. It's about them getting more responsibilities, doing more in their job, but it's not really a promotion. It's not more money. It's simply more responsibilities that will work out for them later on, but it's sort of like, you know, do do more today and we'll think about paying you next week. For Sagittarians, it's in their fifth house. Um, I think it's one of their favorite ones. It's about having a good time. It's about allowing their creativity out and using a group to help the Sagittarian get what the Sagittarian wants and to maximize their creativity. For Capricorns, it's in their fourth house of home versus career and public standing and work answers. They're going to have to go for the career thing. For Capricorns, they're going to have to go for the home thing. Okay. So matters are way more important right now for Capricorns. For Aquarians, it's in their third house of day-to-day -day living. The pace of their life picks up. They get places to go, people to see, more things to do, um, and a lot more short-distance, short-duration travel is in store for the Aquarian. Um, and then for Pisces, the last slide, it's about making more money, and they really have an opportunity to make more money. They can't just sit around and wait for it to happen. They need to be proactive about that, and they need to be the instruments of it. So that's tomorrow's news today for the 12 signs of the Zodiac for the lunar eclipse um, that we're going to have uh, on Tuesday. So. I understand it's Tuesday morning, about 3.45 to... Um, yes, it Tuesday. actually um, it starts at midnight is actually when um, it starts. Midnight on Monday rather than midnight... No, midnight on Tuesday is right. when it starts. So Tuesday morning. I'm not going to see it, but odds are you and Andrew are going to see it because the peak of totality is about 3 o'clock in the morning. And it's right about the time you guys get up. And so um, our blood moons always scare me because the, the reason they're associated with the bad omen is blood and, and death usually accompanies that kind of a thing. So hopefully not here. Better news next week. Next week, much better news. See you then. Always a pleasure.